We begin tonight with scenes we thought were resigned to history. The war in Ukraine has shocked us all with its brutality. But in the last 24 hours, video laid bare just how shocking it is. A word of warning, you may find the pictures we're about to show distressing. This is the town of Busha. Just six weeks ago, it was a prosperous suburb in the capital of Kyiv. Now, dead bodies lay strewn across the street, some with their hands tied behind their backs. Mass graves have been found with reports from officials that 400 people have been killed. President Zelensky visited the town earlier today and called what happened there a genocide. It's war crimes that will be recognized as genocide by the world. You are here and you see what has happened. We know about thousands of killed and tortured people with cut limbs, about raped women and killed children. I think that it's more than. This is genocide. Well, Russia says the killings were staged to sully its name. US President Joe Biden didn't mince his words when talking about the atrocities and called Vladimir Putin a war criminal. You may remember I got criticized for calling Putin a war criminal. Well, the truth of the matter, we saw what happened in Vukka. This warrants him, he is a war criminal. But we have to gather the information. We have to continue to provide Ukraine with the weapons they need to continue the fight. And we have to gather all the detail so this can be an actual, have a war crime trial. This guy is brutal. And what's happening in Vukka is outrageous. And everyone's seen it. Well, I've been speaking to Kira Rudik, a Ukrainian MP who's vis visited the town of Busha over the last few days. And I began by asking her just what she saw. Hello, thank you so much for having me. So I have seen mass graves. I have never seen so many dead bodies before. I have seen bodies of people with uh, hands tied behind their backs. Sometimes it was the families killed, and sometimes it were people who died alone. I have talked to the priests who were gathering those bodies and making sure that they will be buried. I have talked to people who came uh, to get some humanitarian aid and who were telling us firsthand of what happened. I have talked to women who were raped by Russian soldiers with their husband be being killed right there and children who had to watch it. I have talked to mothers whose children died of pneumonia because they were at the basement for 39 days, afraid to get out. And all those people, they were not armed, they were not part of the resistance, they were civilians. They just wanted to survive the war and they were killed just because they existed themselves, their animals, the pets, burned alive or dead and burned. We have seen three bodies of women who were raped and then uh, they tried to get rid of the bodies and they tried to burn it and then ride over them by a tank. I have seen a house that were burned to the ground where it was written on the fence we are peaceful people. Could you believe this? We are peaceful people. But it didn't help them because Russians were shooting exactly at the peaceful people. And what do you think, Kira, when you, when you hear about, when we've seen the Russian denial of this, officials claiming um, that the dead bodies, the images that, that have been seen, they are in fact staged, it's all part of a campaign to gain more support from the West. What, what do you think when you hear that? I think this is one of the ways of how Russians act, calling white black and black white and calling the death, the life and the war, the peace. This is not the first time we see it. And this is exactly why on the first day of liberation of Bucha, I made sure that all the international journalists from all the respectable media are able to get in there, are able to film and to share with the world what is going on there, to, to, to show the truth. And you, now you're able to see the truth. It is impossible that Ukraine would, would burn our houses, would use the weaponry that we even don't possess to shoot at the houses and at the people from the air. 
it is impossible that we we will uh, go over our own people with the tanks mm -hmm. or kill our own people. We are not Russians. We don't do this. Uh, critically, Kira, you mentioned there about journalists coming in and seeing firsthand what's happened. What about um, investigators, independent investigators? How soon do you believe that could happen? We know the UN has been calling for it. You yourself um, say so you're trying to gather evidence, but key to all this is gathering evidence, isn't it? Right. And this is why today we were again with the local commission and we would need to have the International Commission coming in and witnessing it. However, I have a question to you. Once the, once the Commission finishes, uh, then what? Like, what would happen then? I, I'm expecting that there will be a trial and Putin will face the trial. But right now, what we see from the world leaders is the hesitance on getting into it and making sure that we get enough weaponry or that uh, Russian and uh, oil and gas will stop being purchased around the world. They are still thinking that it will go away, but it will not. And I want to let you know that right now, while we are talking, there are people who are still suffering at the occupied territories. And I cannot even imagine what we will see when we will liberate those cities. What we will see in Mary how many horrors and crimes that are happening right, right now there. So isn't it a reason to give us the weapons that we need? Isn't it a reason to stop buying Russian gas and oil by the countries? This is my question. Because I do believe in the commission and, and I do believe in trials and I will, will make sure that every single Russian soldiers will get their justice this way or another way. But what I'm expecting is for the world leaders to step up to finally see what's happening in Ukraine and start being active and start except of condemning, actually giving us the heavy weaponry that we need to push them back from our towns. Because when on the day 40 of war, we are asking for the same thing that on the day one, then I feel so sorry for all my people that are dying because they are dying for no reason right now because they are dying to prove to the, to the uh, peoples of the world that these things are happening. Mm -hmm. And I know, Kira, you were in Busha yesterday and today, and you will be going to other liberated towns um, tomorrow. Uh, do take care. Thank you for joining us on the programme tonight. Kira Rudik, a Ukrainian MP who has joined us live tonight from Kyiv.